Okay, we've rinsed our turkey and now it's ready to be stuffed before we put it in the oven. I've got it on its back right now. The first thing I'm going to do is stuff the neck cavity, so I'm going to turn the bird over. Just remember whenever you're using raw poultry, use a cutting board. This is a nice plastic variety that you can put in the dishwasher or really scrub thoroughly. You don't want to use raw meats and cooked meats on the same board if you can help it. So I've got a different cutting board here that I'm going to be using later. So I've got a big neck cavity here and lots of skin. I'm going to use a spoon and just take some of my stuffing and put it in there. I want to be able to put as much stuffing inside the bird as possible because it's so much yummier after it comes out. You get all those juices from the bird and um, we can mix it with whatever doesn't fit inside the bird and we'll have just a huge batch of delicious stuffing. I have a great recipe on foodl.com for the stuffing so you can go check it out. You can certainly buy pre-made stuffing but it's so so easy to make yourself. You might as well just do it. All right, so we filled up the neck cavity, not too tight. Remember, you need to give it a little room to expand during cooking. Now I'm going to take this and just close it up. I'm going to use some toothpicks. You could use some metal skewers, whatever you have, to kind of sew it back in place, if you will, just so it holds the stuffing in during cooking. You want a nice little package, just like that. Okay, now that the neck cavity is stuffed, I'm going to turn the turkey back over and we're going to fill up the stomach cavity. Now again, when you're stuffing a turkey, you don't want to fill it too full because the turkey will lose some of its water and the stuffing will expand during cooking. You need to live, give it a little bit of breathing room, if you will. If you prefer not to put stuffing in your turkey, put something in there. Something aromatic, maybe an onion, some carrots, some celery, maybe a lemon even, just to give the juices that flow out of the turkey a little bit of flavor. I'm just spooning it in, having a look. This is a good sized turkey. It's 14 pounds. Whatever stuffing I have left over, I've already made my batch, I'm just going to put in an oven proof dish and once the turkey comes out of the oven and I unstuff it, I'm going to mix it all together. Then I'll have delicious, a huge delicious batch of, of stuffing even though all of it wasn't in the turkey. Okay, now I think that's about enough stuffing for now. It's, it's nice and loose in there. There's a little bit of room for expansion without stuffing it too full. I'm going to go ahead and use my trusser mechanism to get my legs back in place for roasting. It keeps it nice and tidy. It'll help keep the stuffing in and it'll help cook the, it'll help the turkey roast a little more evenly. Now you can see I still have a big gaping hole here. Maybe I'll add just a little more stuffing. What I like to do is cover this up with a little bit of aluminum foil so the stuffing doesn't get so dried out right here. Got some foil here. We're just going to cover the cavity just like that. All right. Now we're ready to put it in the roasting pan. But first, let's talk about a couple different ways that you can go about cooking it. First, I'm going to wash my hands. <laughs> Okay, the turkey is stuffed, now we need to get this thing in the oven. I, in the past, have used these oven bags occasionally. I don't know if you've seen them. This helps to keep the turkey moist. It also, when you put it in the bag, all the juices run into the bag, and so it makes for easy gravy. I am not gonna use a bag today. Look, let me just show this to you. It's really big, plenty big to put a turkey in, and you just add a little flour and cook it. Try that method if you've been having trouble with, with drying out. Another method you can try, which is what we're going to do today, is start the turkey on a very, in a very hot oven, 500 degrees. After about 30 minutes, we turn down the oven to 350. That really gives it a jolt. It kind of like, is like searing meat on the stove top and getting it nice and brown on top. And then you lower the heat to gently finish cooking it. The theory is the less time it spends in the oven, the less time it has to dry out. And that's what we're going to try and avoid is a dry turkey. I think nice gravy and cranberry sauce actually um, removes the sin of having a dry turkey. But anyway, we're going to try not to have one in the, anyway. Okay, as far as roasting pans go, if you don't have a large roasting pan, you can buy a disposable roasting pan in the grocery store. These are great uh, and makes for really easy cleanup. But be careful, they can be a little flimsy and when you've got a big heavy turkey and you try and take it out of the oven, you might spill it or, um, you know, it's just a little bit more tricky to work with. So you can use 
these, but be careful with them. What I'm going to do is put them in a big roasting pan and I've got a rack on the bottom. What the rack does is it sits the turkey up a little bit so it doesn't swim in all its juices while it's cooking. Now looking at the bird, I mentioned this in earlier or in another video, it's all, the wingtips have been cut off. Normally what I would suggest is to take the, the arms, the legs, and tuck the wingtips behind so that the turkey will sit up nicely and they'll be nice and close and tight to the body. Kind of like when you're doing sit-ups, you know, and you put your hands behind your head, just like that. That's what you want your turkey to look like. I can't do that. So I'm just going to tuck these in as close to the body as I can, and I'm going to set it directly directly on my rack, on my pan, okay? Now I like to add a little water to the bottom of the pan, maybe a cup, and that'll make sure that as the juices come out that it doesn't burn on the bottom. And I'm also going to rub the breast with just a little bit of olive oil. This helps some nice brown. You could do butter, you could do an herb butter, you could do all kinds of things. I just do a little olive oil. I keep the turkey simple and I make all of my side dishes really special. So here we go. My turkey is ready to go in the oven. I'm going to leave it uncovered at 500 degrees. As it starts to brown, I'll then cover it with foil to protect it so that the top doesn't get too brown and so it doesn't dry out. And then we'll look at another video on timing, testing for doneness, and then how to carve it. Let's get cooking.